and team to come and join us when we needed somebody. So thank you and uh, give a round of applause for Pat. I'd like to say good morning to each and every one of you. It's truly a pleasure to be with you to share this beautiful Sunday day. Now, some of you may look at me a little cat guy because it is free outside, but this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This morning, I'm not going to talk to you very long, but I'm going to preach to you from the message, A Time of Sacrifice. In doing so, I'm going to use two scriptures. The first being Hebrews 13, verses 15 and 16. Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise, the fruit of lips that openly profess his name and do not forget to do good and to share with others. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. The second scripture is found in Galatians chapter 2, verse 20. For I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Sacrifice for the sake of others is a unique and rarely witnessed behavior in today's culture. Egotism, Selfishness, hoarding, greed, violence, all are so commonplace. In fact, tragedy in our society is so much the norm that we don't even hesitate when we see it in the news. Last year alone, natural disasters displaced 3 million people. In 2021, the FBI reported 7,000 hate crimes, and they considered that to be a gross underestimate. Today in our society, one in every four families who have children, 19 and younger, are suffering from food insecurity. The need for the presence of God in our lives and in the lives of others has never been so urgent. We need to enter into a time of sacrifice, a time when we can relinquish the I want to embrace the concept of what does my Savior need and what does my God expect of me. Lent is a very solemn time. It's a time of true selfless sacrifice, a time when we bear witness to the ultimate atonement for sin for the sake of others. It is a time when we quiet our hearts and minds to reflect on the true meaning of Christ's journey to the cross. Pause for just one moment and think. As God was laying the foundation of the earth, the plan for the crucifixion was already designed. Moses was dividing the Red Sea and David was slaying giants while Isaiah was prophesying that a young girl would give birth to a son fathered by our God and Savior. God knew that for his will to be accomplished in our lives, we would need someone to make intercession for us and our families, and he chose his son. The Jews were waiting for a king, someone to ride in on a white horse, ready for battle. Instead, Jesus proved to be, let us say, a unique type of king. The Jewish people were waiting for a liberator, a warrior, but Jesus was no warrior king. In fact, love proved to be his weapon of choice. 
even as Jesus prepared for his final journey to Jerusalem and having full knowledge of what would happen, he loved his disciples so much that he was compelled to begin preparing them for what was to come. He told them that the end result of their journey would be tragic. In fact, Jesus engaged the disciples in a conversation about his impending arrest. Peter, being the outspoken person he was, admonished him. Peter knew the vast numbers of Jesus' followers, and their numbers were significant. Peter was sure that under the guidance of a warrior king, they could overtake the Romans with great ease. However, Jesus knew that this was not to be. Understand that our Father God cloaked his son in a body of flesh so that he would become the ultimate sacrifice and savior for all mankind. His beloved son, stood elbow to elbow with him as he shut the mouths of lions so they could not harm Daniel in the lion's den. His beloved son who went into the fiery promise with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The loved, beloved son who was acknowledged through the sign of a dove descending upon him following his baptism by John the Baptist. Christ needed a body so that he could live among us full of grace and full of truth. The unblemished Lamb of God, a lamb ready for the slaughter, above sin and full of grace, so that we might be able to stand before the Lord and take our place with him in glory. The journey to the cross was difficult, and the journey to the cross was lonely. Yet the journey to the cross was necessary. Scripture tells us in Hebrews 10, verses 4 through 6, when Christ came into the world, he said these words, Sacrifice and offerings you did not desire, but a body, God, you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased. Then I said, here am I. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to do the will of the Father. It was the Jews who called for the crucifixion, but the Romans who carried it out. Yet for mankind to be restored, it was Christ's sacrifice and commitment to doing the will of God that truly makes us whole. Christ's sacrifice was twofold. He paid the price for our sin, and secondly, he returned us to a place of grace. Because of his sacrifice, we were left with a multitude of gifts. Among them, forgiveness, grace, salvation, but most importantly, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Christ has established the benchmark. The expectation has been set. In truth, as we are all on this Christian journey, we, there should be something in our lives that creates a sense of urgency in us to bring a little bit of heaven down here on earth, not just for ourselves, but for those that Christ described as being the least of these. True sacrifice compels us to look beyond ourselves and touch the lives of others. Truth be so told, sacrifice can be exhausting. It may tax us emotionally, spiritually, and 
and sometimes it may end up in a pocketbook. Sacrifice may even separate us from our material possessions, but sacrifice for the sake of sacrifice is its own reward. Being individuals of faith, my nephew and his wife felt compelled to open up their home to a 14-year-old who had been abandoned by her mother. The mother lacked the necessary resources to care for her child. So she dropped the child at a local hospital, letting them know that she would not be back. My nephew and his wife saw this as an opportunity to serve. They saw it as an opportunity to sacrifice. Now, truth be told, they already had a 14-year-old and a 16-year-old. Bringing an unknown person into the home was going to be a tremendous challenge. And let's assume that maybe the person coming into their home had some behaviors that might be challenging as well. But my nephew and his wife were not discouraged. They were not discouraged. They saw this as an opportunity to do God's will. Think about the horrific storm, snowstorm that hit California. There were families trapped in their homes for days, some as long as two buried in six to nine feet of snow. There was a young man in the news who reported that there were some who were fortunate enough to dig their way out. And they were truly grateful. But here's where sacrifice comes in. The few who were able to dig their way out did not just sit back and celebrate their triumph. No, they used their small victory to seize the opportunity to be a blessing to others. They formed a rescue team whose sole purpose was to secure, ensure that those who were trapped had the food, medicine, and supplies they needed until they were rescued. That's true sacrifice. This true Christian journey does not come without its challenges. To the contrary, the road may get rough, but scripture tells us that weeping may endure for a night, but joy, true joy, is coming in the morning. It also says, I have been old and young, and now I am old, Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. The Savior carried the cross all the way to Calvary, not for anything that he had done. That cross belonged to us. It was a cross that symbolized everything we got wrong. There is nothing we can do under our own power to redeem ourselves from our sins. No animal so unblemished, no person so pure. There was just one. Just one. The one whose blood who could pay the price for all of mankind. There was no one greater, has been no one greater, who has walked the earth. It was he who spoke to the storms and he who walked on the water. Christ came to do the will of the Father. He took away the law and left us with two commandments. Love the Lord thy God and love your neighbor as yourself. So what does it look like when we're loving our neighbors? We sacrifice. 
Scripture tells us that God has provided the tools, but the tools only have value if we use them. Scripture says, not my will, but thy will be done. Christ has stepped through the, store, through the door. He's waiting. I can't disappoint him. Yet I don't know what is on the opposite side of that door. But this I do know, that I serve a Christ who will never leave me. The challenges may be rough, but Christ will be there. When it is time to celebrate, Christ will be there. Galatians 2, verse 20 says, For I have been Christ crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. For the life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Spirit of God, we need your presence. We need the determination, the courage, the strength to fulfill your will in our lives. You've given us so much, Lord, and there is no way we can begin to repay you for all that you have sacrificed. In truth, there is no way to repay the debt and no requirement for us to pay the debt. Your son Jesus has left us with a clean slate. Followed with an open invitation to join him in glory. The doors are wide open. All we need to do is walk right in. No strings attached. Thank you, Lord, for your love. Thank you, Lord, for your son.